Welcome to Sunday Morning with Stamford Methodist Circuit and with me, Tony Law, on this first Sunday of 2024. We wish you a very happy new year. Yesterday, depending how you count, was Twelfth Night, and it was the Feast of the Epiphany when traditionally we remember the saga of the wise men who came looking for the infant Jesus. The word epiphany means making something clear, opening it up, bringing it fully into the light of day. The original Greek word means to reveal. Today, our reading brings into focus not the revealing of Christ to those wise men, but his revelation by God's Spirit at his baptism by John. In a moment, we'll hear the story. But first, let's pray a Celtic prayer from David Adams's Tides and Seasons. Awaken me, Lord, to your light. Open my eyes to your presence. Awaken me, Lord, to your love. Open my heart to your indwelling. Awaken me, Lord, to your life. Open my mind to your abiding. Awaken me, Lord, to your purpose. Open my will to your guiding. So now here's the account Mark gives of the revelation of Jesus, based on Alan Dale's version in his New World. Then we'll share Fred Prick Green's hymn, when Jesus came to Jordan, as we start to think about what we have heard. Alan Dale says this, there's an old poem in the Bible written in faraway Babylon a long time before our story begins. The Jewish people were prisoners there, but they were soon to be set free to go back across the desert to their homeland. The poem is about the journey home and it begins like this, the voice of someone shouting in the lonely desert, Get God's road ready, make his path straight. Mark says, John appeared, like the man in the poem, on the lonely moorland, calling people to change their ways so that God might forgive them. He told them to be baptised in the water of the Jordan River as a sign that they had really changed their ways. All sorts of people went out to hear him. Ordinary people, country people from Judea and town people from Jerusalem. They were baptised by him in the water of Jordan River, saying that they were sorry for the wrong things they had done. John lived as his desert ancestors had lived. He had a cloak of camel's hair and a leather belt round his waist, and he used to eat locusts and wild honey. A stronger one than I am comes after me, John told the people. I am not good enough to bend down and untie his shoelaces. I have used water as a sign that your hearts will be made clean. He will give you God's own power. When the crowds were going out to hear John, Jesus left his home in Nazareth, and he was baptised by John in the water of Jordan River. As Jesus was coming up out of the river, he saw, as it were, the sky split in two, and with the gentleness of a dove, God's Spirit filled his heart with peace. Into his mind came God's words. You are my only son, with whom I am very pleased. Then God's spirit sent him out into the moorland, and he stayed there many a long day. His only company was wild animals, but God looked after him.
Over Christmas, I wonder how many of you watched the programme about the King's coronation year. I'm sure not everyone sharing this morning will be a royalist, but nonetheless, there were historic and remarkable things in the coronation ceremony, which was the focus, though not the whole content, of that documentary. I was particularly struck by words from two of the Abbey clergy, whose comments illuminated both the long preparation and the ceremony itself. Other faiths were represented at the heart of the ceremony, and the Dean of the Abbey said, there was an energy about the way we were offering back to the nation and the Commonwealth what kind of community we are. And at the moment of crowning, they showed comments from Mark Birch, the presenter of the, of the Abbey, and he said this, yes, it's about a man being crowned, but actually how much it says about every life and every human destiny. For me, it was about human destiny under God, writ large. Well, here we have in our reading from St. Mark's Gospel, Jesus's dedication to the life and calling that he no doubt had been preparing for too, for some time. Mark jumps in at the deep end, if you will, with his gospel. There's no birth narrative. Those are in Matthew and Luke. There's no preamble, no theological introduction. That's left to St. John. No. Mark introduces John the Baptist and gives us the words of John about Jesus. And then he just says that Jesus turned up where John was baptizing. So here at Jesus's baptism, it's not as if we believe Jesus actually needed baptism in token of repentance, but in his baptism, he's identified with, no, he identifies himself with those who need repentance. I didn't come to call righteous people, he said later. I came to call those who are sinful to repentance. The pattern of making himself one of them, one with them, one with us, is at the heart of our faith. And Mark pictures the affirmation. Mark doesn't report this as a public proclamation. It's not a televised coronation. Mark says that he, Jesus, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit coming upon him. And for Mark, this is the context for the whole of the rest of the Gospel account. Jesus is revealed, affirmed to the reader, before there's been any account of his ministry. To follow on from those coronation comments, yes, it's about a man being baptised. But the whole point is how much it says about every life and every human destiny. It is about human destiny under God writ large. So it is about our destiny. It's about our call to follow Christ's example, to experience and to offer and to share the unbounded spirit, the Christ alongside, the Creator's love. We offer back to our neighbours with energy, the kind of community we are, rooted and grounded in love, as Paul says in his letter to the church at Ephesus. Paul says this, I pray that Christ will dwell in your hearts through faith, so that because you have been rooted and grounded in love, you will be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and thus to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you will be filled up to all the fullness of God. So we create epiphany, we reveal Christ every day. With Paul, let's pray. Eternal Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you revealed him to be your son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep all of us who are born of water and the Spirit faithful to our calling as your people and help us to show your praise, not only in our worship, but in our living. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So come, let us sing of a wonderful love, our hymn in Singing the Faith, 443.
And so we pray for others and for ourselves. We remind ourselves that God's voice was heard above the dark waters of chaos. God spoke and there was light. God's voice was heard beside the waters of Jordan. God spoke and Christ's sonship was affirmed. God's voice was heard in the words of the apostles. God spoke and they received the gift of the Spirit. So God, our creator, we pray for the dark and chaotic areas of our world, for peoples deluged and swept along by warfare, by poverty, by the forces of oppression and economic self-interest. We pray that your voice may be heard and your light be shed in all areas of the world that are on our minds that we can name now. God, our Creator, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Saviour, we pray for those searching for a new way of living, for people longing to be washed free of guilt and emptiness and fear. We pray that your voice may be heard offering them life through your Son, especially through our living and actions among those with whom you've placed us. And we remember those who suffer in special need of Christ's renewing, healing and comforting touch. Saviour God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, hear with us, we pray, for a deeper faith in your saving love for a deeper awareness of your presence refreshing our thirsty souls and binding us together in love and joy and peace. We pray that your voice may be heard guiding, inspiring and challenging us, your children, in this community together now and in the communities which we represent. Emmanuel, God with us in your mercy, hear our prayer. The prayer for revelation of the buried treasure we hold. God's gifts lie deep within us, waiting only to be revealed. Brought into the light, these treasures shine with divine radiance, filling the world, spilling out into the lives of others, revealing God's presence among us. Lord, help us to see these hidden treasures in ourselves and in others, which you have placed there to be shared with all. May we so value them that their richness may be shared for the good and all and for the glory of God. Amen. And we share the Lord's Prayer. As always, I'll lead using the more modern form, but please share using any form or language that's appropriate for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
in our turn reveal Christ in his world. Our closing music is Christina Rossetti's Love Came Down at Christmas, looking back to Christmas, but forward to the rest of our work. Love shall be our token, love for yours and love for mine, love for all, as Christ showed, love for all in service to all. A church we know reminds themselves at the end of every, every act of worship, our worship is ending. Our service is just beginning. Thank you for sharing this morning and may the blessing of God beyond us who holds us in being, God alongside us who shows us the way, and God unbounded the spirit who affirms us as Christ was affirmed at Jordan. May the blessing of this our God go with us always. Amen. <laughs>